Hello, my name is Matthew Hine. I'm the Chief Product Officer at RDX Works. Being the Chief Product Officer basically means that my job is to figure out what stuff the RDX Works team can build that's going to be really useful for people to help achieve our goals. And our goals is a big community effort. We're trying to figure out how to take Web3 and DeFi mainstream finally, take it out of the realm of experimentation and kind of high risk things that people are playing around with and really make it something that most people are using every day of their lives. So Babylon, the launch of Babylon, the upgrade of the, the mainnet, the Radix mainnet to the Babylon uh, version is a really, really exciting point in that history because this is the point where all of the really exciting things that are already going on in Web3 and DeFi become possible to build and deploy on the Radix mainnet. We're going to have our Radix engine virtual machine, our Scripto smart contracts, our transaction manifest style of transactions, a whole new wallet experience that interacts with Web3. All of that stuff is going live at Babylon mainnet launch, uh, and there's so much cool capability for people to start taking advantage of to build things in a way that's not just recreating what people are doing in other networks, but building in a way that's safer, faster to deploy, more featureful, finally starting to take this out of the, the, the laboratory. But another thing I want to talk about that's really exciting to me is what comes after that day one. Because one of the cool things about Babylon to me is that it's not just architected to be, okay, it just barely meets this minimum spec of kind of doing what Ethereum does, but maybe one or two things better. It's designed, it's architected to be extensible, to continue to grow into the future and continue to allow us to find what mainstream Web3 and DeFi looks like with our developer community and our user community. So what I mean by that is that there are features that we can develop that don't require patching on new stuff. It's not as if on a lot of networks where every time there's a new concept for a product idea or a new type of asset, it suddenly is this lengthy process of thinking, okay, we need a new ERC standard and we need to get that adopted in the wallets and people need to upgrade, update their smart contracts to know how to interact with that. Our asset oriented model and the way we've architected the platform allows us to build new features to enable some things without having to re-architect. It means that asset behavior is a fundamental thing that kind of feels like the laws of physics that doesn't have to change, but it means that we can just sort of add new capabilities and new laws onto that. If we want to do uh, assets that can contain other assets, that doesn't mean rethinking how assets work or building a new smart contract standard. It just means, cool, okay, well, there's a new intuitive behavior. When this thing moves, it moves with something else, and we need to think about how the people would expect that to work. So everything from scripto features all the way up to things we can do with the wallet, there's this really, really exciting deep roadmap of things that we can continue to enable for the months and years to come. Um, we can build great user experiences with the Radix wallet and allow it to connect to more applications and do more things because the platform features that are sitting behind the wallet are already there. We already have this very flexible smart account system that allows you to build in multi-sig structures and really cool rules about how you control your account. We already have an identity system on Elijah that's going to allow us to build on new features in terms of how people connect their identity and manage that in, in Web3. We already have the ability of having this wallet be able to connect to different kinds of things. Um, and we already have the asset model, which means the wallet can understand what's really happening with transactions and show what they people they mean. And we can expand the set of what the wallet can show you. And we can expand what we can do with, uh, with how, what we, how we show assets to users over time. So the launch itself is a really exciting point in time, but it's not the end of the road. There's so much more that's coming down the pipeline. And for us as RDX work, this is super exciting because it means we're really passionate about what we're going to continue to be able to build with our developer community and build for them. And it's also, we hope it's exciting for the community itself because it's not going to be a matter of, okay, you build the first thing and then you kind of figure, you know, that's, that's about it. You're kind of, you know, you're stuck. We know what the capabilities are and anything else is going to be a big little laborious slog to add anything more on. We think that, cap that applications are going to start at this really high level and only become more and more capable and more and more exciting with time. So again, Babylon main upgrade is coming very soon. It's going to be a super exciting point. We hope to see you all there and um, join the community.